bull market is officially back. Michael Burry was wrong and big news for Cosmos and a major warning from Elon Musk on artificial intelligence. First, let's talk about the bull market, which is officially back on. Well, for the NASDAQ 100 anyway, which officially entered a bull market on Wednesday, rallying more than 20% from the December lows. Now this is the big tech stock index and it just had its second best quarter in a freaking decade, man. Now I know what you're thinking. Lark, why are you talking about NASDAQ, man? Nobody cares about stocks. I wanna know about the magic internet money. Well, glad that you asked. Bitcoin and the NASDAQ have an interesting relationship because Bitcoin and cryptocurrency more broadly really tends to move very closely with tech stocks. For better or worse, the broader market treats cryptocurrencies just kind of like a, a high risk tech stock basically. But the flip side here is that in a risk on environment, like when the Federal Reserve adds hundreds of billions of dollars to its balance sheet in just a few weeks time, which is exactly what we've just seen happen, then Bitcoin actually benefits from this relationship of the market viewing it as such. And while we don't use the same metrics for Bitcoin, you know, necessarily to count that a Bitcoin bull market is starting as is used for the NASDAQ 100, the simple fact is right now for markets, we're seeing things turn generally bullish and who knows how long that lasts. But if the NASDAQ is a bull market and Bitcoin follows the NASDAQ, well, there you go. I'm here to ride that wave anyway. Next, let's talk about Michael Burry, the guy who famously shorted the global financial crisis back in 2008. Now, he tweeted that he was wrong to say sell. So back in late January, he tweeted out one word, sell. At the time, the S&P 500 was near 4,200. It then dropped down to 3,800 in the following week. So, you know, he wasn't totally wrong, but he was expecting complete Armageddon in the markets. The market did turn bear a short term, but now the situation is dramatically different than when he tweeted just a couple months ago. We are right now in an era of unprecedented money printing again. And look, Burry could not really have predicted a major banking crisis would end up forcing the Federal Reserve to turn on the money printers again, thus creating this new risk on environment, great for tech stocks and Bitcoin and all that stuff. Yeah, look, we all get it wrong. I was feeling very bearish at the end of 2022 and it clouded my eyes to the opportunity that was in front of me in the cryptocurrency market. Oh sure, I kept buying my Bitcoin every week very diligently, but I missed some huge altcoin gains due to bear market PTSD. Remember, it's not about being right all the time. It's just about being right enough to make money. That's what it comes down to. Now, before we talk about the changing world order, artificial intelligence and Cosmos, if you are a trader, then you need yourself an account over on Bybit. It is the best place for trading futures contracts, has a huge altcoin spot market, super popular copy trading service, and you can get up to 30 freaking thousand dollars in deposit bonuses, as well as win 1500 bucks by using the link down below in the description to start your account. So check that out if you are a trader. Let's talk about what could be one of really the biggest title changes of global monetary policy in our lifetime, something that could change literally everything when it comes to international money, right? Is this the end of the dollar led order and as the dollar is the global reserve currency? Maybe not quite yet, but major competition has definitely entered the ring. It's been a big week for nations ditching their dollars as de-dollarization is ramping up. Both Fox News and CNN even covered the topic this week in the USA. And if we're seeing it on the mainstream media, well, you can be sure that it's already happening because they're usually way late to the game. China and the UAE based French company Total have actually completed their first liquefied natural gas trade using cross-border settlement in the Chinese Yuan instead of US dollars. Now this marks the first international LNG transaction settled in Chinese Yuan. And it was the French doing it. Interesting. In fact, the Yuan has now become the world's fifth largest payment currency, the third largest currency in trade settlement, and the fifth largest reserve currency globally. It's gaining fast, but this is only just the start of what's been happening over the last week. China and Brazil, like fifth or sixth biggest economy in the world, they reached a trade deal that they're gonna be doing their trade in their own currencies. So that's the Chinese Yuan and the Brazilian Real. This means that Brazil is also ditching the US dollar as an intermediary to trade with China. 
that's because China is Brazil's biggest trading partner. Why would they use dollars between them? Neither of them really want dollars. Last year, we saw a record $150.5 billion in bilateral trade between these two countries. Huge, right? But wait, there is more. Saudi Arabia has entered the chat, right? They actually got into a trade agreement via the Shanghai Cooperation Organization with China, Russia, India, Pakistan, and four other Central Asian nations. Big, big news. Now the BRICS nations, which are Brazil, Russia, India, South Africa, and China, of course, have overtaken the G7 nations in GDP this week. That's huge. That's huge. The BRICS just overtook the GDP of the frickin' G7, man. Holy freaking cow. From a financial sense, it's been one of those weeks where decades seems to have happened. There's so many big stories in terms of international monetary policy. And in a time of political turmoil where we could see a new reserve currency rising, holding Bitcoin feels pretty good, to be honest. Now let's talk about Cosmos. Cosmos is one of those underdog blockchains, but has a ton of of good stuff happening on it. First up, DYDX is making the move over to Cosmos. DYDX, the decentralized exchange, and they're moving from where they are currently uh, using Starkware technology, which is a layer two network for Ethereum built by Starkware called StarkX. Anyway, instead it's moving over to its own Cosmos based blockchain. Circle is also planning to bring its USDC stablecoin over to the Cosmos network. The plans were first announced all the way back in September of last year, but Circle has now actually come out and unveiled its chosen issuance partner, which is a company called Noble. Now this is an issuance chain built on the Cosmos network through the IBC framework. USDC is going to be the first native fiat backed stablecoin to exist in the Cosmos ecosystem. It could be a big boost for Cosmos. Cosmos based blockchain as well, Injective has released a layer two testnet for Solana based applications. The testnet uses Solana's rollup called C-Level Virtual Machine. This means that Solana developers can now actually test their applications within the Cosmos ecosystem without needing to completely change the tooling or the programming language in order to run those kind of tests. So that's pretty big news and as another courting of Solana developers to come on over. Now let's talk about the big AI warning from Elon Musk. It looks like AI is growing too fast, too quick, and the tech industry is ready to say, whoa, slow down and hit the pause button. So Elon Musk, Steve Wozniak from Apple, and more than 2,600 other tech leaders have signed an open letter calling for a six month pause on AI training. The pause would be for all major AI labs training beyond GPT-4. So ChatGPT just launched GPT-4 upgrade a few weeks ago. So no doubt they're already, of course, working on the next iteration, GPT-5, right, it's coming. This pause comes after sharing concerns that human competitive intelligence can pose profound risks to society and to humanity. The letter was published by the US think tank called Future of Life Institute, which has actually come out and basically explained that advanced AI could represent a profound change in the history of life on Earth and should be planned for and to be managed with commensurate care and resources. Unfortunately, this level of planning and management is not happening. What we're seeing in AI right now is gonna change everything, right? And as they say, the world's really not prepared for the major changes that AI is bringing. If we see the rate of acceleration of how AI is developing, it's going like this right now. It's crazy, the rate of change is nuts. Of course, there's always the theory, it's just a big publicity stunt from Elon Musk, slow down you know, his AI developing competitors so he can build a rival AI to open AI's uh, chat GPT. Remember, Elon Musk was a founder, although no longer a founding member of OpenAI, right? Maybe, we'll see. But just like the money printer, once the toothpaste is out of the tube, it's pretty hard to get it back in, right? AI's here, Pandora's box has been opened, and even if you get some people to agree to slow down, not everybody's gonna do it. It's an arms race of artificial intelligence right now. Whether we like it or not, it's here. What do you think we should do? Should we pause AI development for six months? Can it even be done realistically? Let me know down below. Okay, that's it. Subscribe now. See you next time.